Hey, thanks for uh, watching this. Uh, this is Chasen at Lone Grove Assembly of God Youth, and this is our Wednesday service online. Uh, we're not able to have service here in the church, and so 
Hope you guys enjoyed the worship and hope you enjoyed this. I have uh, just one announcement I want to let you guys know um, to remind you guys. If you'll download the Zoom app, we're going to do uh, maybe in a day or two a uh, kind of a, like a conference call uh, where everybody can talk and be on video. And so download the Zoom app and follow the instructions on it. It's free and so we'll be able to do that. But I want to just take a few moments and since we can't have service, I just wanted to share a scripture, a few scriptures with you. And talk to you for just a minute tonight in, in place of our normal Wednesday evening service. So uh, just give me a couple minutes. I'm not going to talk real long. And, and so uh, let's get into it. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for this time to be able to be on online and, and just to be able to minister to these young people. Lord, I pray that you would help them to receive what you have for them. Lord, help me to give the word that you have for all of us. Lord, we thank you and we love you in the name of Jesus. Amen. All right, I'm going to read from Luke chapter 10, and I'm going to read a few scriptures tonight. It tells a story that I wanted to share with you guys. And in Luke chapter 10, verse 38 through 42, says, As Jesus and the disciples continue on their way to Jerusalem, they came to a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed, them, welcomed him into her home. Her sister Mary sat at the Lord's feet, listening to what he taught. But Martha was distracted by the big dinner she was preparing. She came to Jesus and said, Lord, doesn't it seem unfair to you that my sister just sits here while I do all the work. Tell her to come and help me. But the Lord said to her, my dear Martha, you are worried and upset over all these details. There is only one thing worth being concerned about. Mary has discovered it and it will not be taken away from her. And so we have a story here in the New Testament where Jesus was traveling and he was going to Jerusalem and he decided to stop at his, some of his friend's house. And uh, his friends were uh, Mary and Martha and these were the sisters of Lazarus. And it doesn't talk about Lazarus in this, in this story right here, but we know that uh, Lazarus died and that Jesus loved Lazarus so much that the Bible says that he wept. And so these were good friends of Jesus. I don't know how they became friends. I don't know why they were such good friends. Maybe Jesus knew them when he was a kid. Maybe they were uh, played together. Maybe they spent time together at some point in his life. Uh, but for whatever reason, he decided to go and visit their house. And so when he stopped at their house, um, they did kind of the usual thing. I don't know how many of you guys, uh, when somebody says, I'm coming over to the house, your mom says, we've got to clean. And so you spend all the time running around cleaning. It's how it is sometimes at our house. If we know somebody's coming by, we, we get it cleaned up really good and really nice because we don't want people to come over in the house and be a mess. And so uh, I don't know if it's that way at your house, but that's kind of what Martha was doing. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. I mean, can you imagine if Jesus came to your house? It'd be pretty awesome. But Martha was running around cleaning. She was doing everything she could to get the house ready to prepare the house. And she said, we got to have food. We got to have something to eat. We got to feed Jesus. And, you know, Jesus had people traveling with him. So I don't know how many people came, but uh, there might have been more people there. And, and so the, his disciples or maybe just some followers or just some, I don't know who was there. But it's, uh, Martha said, we've got to prepare food. We've got to have something for him. So, you know, Jesus, you know, there was a lot of fish in that time. And Jesus had a lot, you know, you read about Jesus and a lot of fish. And, you know, catching fish and, and you know, feeding people fish. So maybe she was frying, frying some fish. Man, everybody loves a good fish fry. I love a good fish fry. Maybe she was frying some fish, frying up some hush puppies, frying some, uh, may, maybe some french fries, maybe making some coleslaw and, you know, just all those things. She had to make homemade tartar sauce because they didn't have Walmart to go down, you know, and, and, and buy it. So, um, so she was busy doing all of this stuff and getting everything ready, getting everything perfect. And Jesus came and he was sitting in there and he was talking, you know, kind of sat in the living room on the couch or something and was sitting there hanging out. And Mary was sitting there with him and she was talking to him and, and they were just kind of hanging out and they were just, you know, visiting and she's listening to him. And Martha was in the kitchen running around cooking and looked in there and saw Mary sitting there. And she said, Mary lives here too. Why isn't Mary in here working? Have you ever had to do some chores and maybe, you know, at my house, I make my kids, y'all know I make my kids do chores. They have a chore list. And sometimes, um, you know, one of them does some chores and the others, they kind of sit around and, and they get mad and they start telling on them, you know, Ethan's not doing his chores or, or you know, uh, Michaela's not or Skyly's not. And they're saying, well, they're not doing their chores. And so they get mad. Have you ever got that way? I, I did. I used to get mad at my brother and my sister and they would make me do their chores because they, they, they could beat me up when I was a little bitty as I was little when I was a little bitty. That's been a long time. But anyway, so Martha looks in there and she sees Mary sitting there not doing anything and it makes her mad because she says she should be in here helping me. She should be working to, to fix this food. 
and to help me. And she's not. She's sitting in there just talking to Jesus. And so she went to Jesus. And I don't know. The Bible doesn't say. She might have went to Mary and said, Mary, come help me. And Mary's like, no, leave me alone. I don't know. But she went to Jesus and she said, it's not fair, Jesus. And she kind of whined to Jesus a little bit and said, hey, it's not fair that I'm doing all the work. Martha and Mary's just sitting in here. I'm trying to fix a meal for you. I'm trying to make everything right for you. And, and Mary's just sitting here. And, and she expected Jesus to get up and say, Mary, how dare you sit here while Martha's in there working and cleaning? Just like when we tattle on our brothers and sisters or we tattle on somebody, we expect them to get in trouble. But Jesus didn't get on to Mary. He didn't gripe at her. Matter of fact, the Bible says that he looked at Martha and he says, you're worried and upset over all these details. But there's only one thing worth being concerned about. And that was spending time with Jesus. And so Mary understood that and she knew that. And here's the thing that I believe Jesus knew and Jesus understood too, is I believe that Jesus knew that his time on the earth was not going to be much longer, that it wasn't going to be very long before he was going to leave. He knew that the next few years after he leaves and goes back to heaven was going to be really tough for the church and really tough for the Christians. And I believe that he knew because of all that, that his followers were going to be persecuted. They were going to be beaten. They were going to be, uh, you know, bad things happening to him all the time. He knew it was important that he spend as much time with them, preparing them for what was about to happen. That he spend as much time uh, speaking life and speaking the word into them so they would be prepared for what was coming. And so I believe that as he looked at Mary, who was sitting and listening to what he was saying, I believe he understood that and he had compassion on her. And I believe he told Martha, you, look, you know, you need to prepare. You're preparing for the worst. You're preparing for this meal. You're preparing for all. The, but you need to be preparing for what's about to happen in the years to come. And so, uh, you know, today uh, we're kind of in a time where it's, it's not an easy time. It's kind of hard. You guys are out of school, which I know you're excited about. And maybe even not going to be out of school for the rest of the school year. And I know you're, you're thinking that's good. But a lot of things are happening. A lot of people are getting sick and stuff. And, you know, a lot of stuff's going on with the virus. And, and people are being out of work. And, and, and they're losing money. And, and all this stuff's happening. And, and it's, it's kind of, it could be a bad time. It could be a rough time. And so I truly believe we need to spend as much time with Jesus so he can prepare us for what's coming. I believe we should have been spending time with Jesus already to prepare us for what's happening now. And I, and I do believe that God and, and Jesus has prepared us for this. I believe he's prepared even in our own church. We've set up and we've got the capabilities with the live stream. We've bought a lot of equipment in the past few months to, in order to be able to live stream and to be prepared to do what we're doing. And so I believe God has prepared us for that and he's preparing us for the future. But we have to spend time with him. Now, we can't come to the church and spend time at the church like we want to. We can't come in here to the youth building and, and have our worship and, and, and have our, our services and, and, and hang out and, and build each other up as, as we're supposed to. Um, but here's the thing, and this is what's so awesome, is that in this story, it doesn't talk about how they came to the church. It talks about how Jesus went to their house. And I want you to understand today, Jesus will come to your house the same as he came to Mary and Martha's house. Now, he can't do it physically, but he comes through the form of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will come and be with you. And the teaching of Jesus in, in his Bible, or in the Bible, and, and, and the words that he gave are still there. And, and we take those in our house. And, and here's another way that we can have Jesus come into our house is through the very thing we're doing right now. And that's videos. That's live streaming. It's through all the stuff that you can bring into your house, put it on your phone, put it on your computer, your tablet, even on television. And and watch it and allow Jesus to come and minister to you and still be taught the word of God and still worship just like we did with the videos before uh, uh, where we did worship here and you could see it on your phone and in your house and Jesus will come in. But here's the thing. You can either have the response when this stuff happens, when we put this out there, you can have the response from live stream. You can have the response of either Martha or Mary. You could be like Martha and you could be so busy with things at home that you don't have time to listen to Jesus being taught, Jesus being preached. You don't have time to watch the videos. You don't have time for that. You can be so busy. And I know it's easy to get busy because right now you don't have school, man. You can go play ball all day long. You can play video games. You can watch TV for hours and hours. And I know you've got Netflix, you've got Hulu, you've got Disney Plus, you've got all this stuff that you can spend your time, not to mention YouTube. And you can spend all day watching YouTube videos. And you can do all this. Maybe even some of you spend all your time reading books. Maybe not. I don't know. Maybe one or two of you. 
But anyway, but, but you, you, maybe you keep yourself so busy with all these other things and, and, and maybe even you have to clean the house, which I understand that. But the, this is like Martha stayed so busy that Jesus Christ was there. The Messiah, the Savior was sitting there in her living room and she was so busy, she missed out on him. Or maybe you could be like Mary, who when, my, when she heard Jesus was coming to the house, she said, I need to prepare myself because I want to get everything I can from Jesus. I want to hear everything I can from Jesus. And when Jesus came, she didn't worry about cooking dinner. She didn't worry about being too busy. She said, I just want to sit at his feet. She, went, she knew he wasn't going to be there long because Jesus had many travels. He had places to go. He was going to Jerusalem. And she knew that if he was only there for a couple hours, for a few hours, that she wanted to spend that time with him and wasn't worried about all the other stuff. And you could be like Mary. You could say, you know what? I, I, sure, I've got time to play ball. I can play video games. Whatever it is that you do, whatever you're trying to fill your time with. Maybe just sleeping all day. That's happening at my house. Some of the kids are just sleeping all day. But maybe you just say, I just want to sleep. I just want to hang out. I just want to do it. But you know what? Be like Mary and say, when I have an opportunity to hear someone teaching, to hear someone preaching, to, to, to see worship uh, and, 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 and enter into that worship and listen to God's word being taught, whether it's through me or someone else, through pastor or someone that you're seeing online, I want to spend that time because I only have a little bit of time because we can't go to church. We can't hang out at church. We can't go after school to church and hang out. I only have a little bit of time and I want to spend that time with Jesus. I want to spend that time worshiping Jesus. I want to spend that time uh, studying the Bible. And so I, I just want to encourage you to do that. I want, I've got one more scripture and, and then we're going to close in a second. And that scripture is first, second, first Timothy four, chapter 12 and 13. It says this, it says, let no one despise your youth. And that means just because you're youth, you know, it's, it's easy to see the older folks sitting around watching TV. They watch TBN, they watch the, but don't, don't let anyone despise your youth. Don't, don't think just because you're a youth, you don't have to uh, study the Bible, that you don't have to listen to teaching and preaching. Let no one despise you, but be an example to the believers in the word, in conduct, in love, in spirit, in faith, and in purity. You should be examples of all this to everyone else, even in a time when you can't be at church. It's easy to be an example of what God wants us to be while we're here at the youth building, while we're shooting pool or playing nine square or we're hanging out here. It's easy to do that. But when you can't come here, when you can't hang out with us, you're at home, you're wherever you are, it's time to be an example of what God wants you to be. Verse 13 says, till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, and to doctrine. You should give attention to studying the word of God, attention to listening to this teaching. Just like Mary, you should give attention to Jesus in your home. Not just at church, not just other places, but you should allow Jesus to come into your home and, and, and minister to you there in, in any, whatever form it may take. Right now, it's the form of videos. Right now, it's the form of streaming on, on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and the other, the other areas that we do it, talking through Zoom, uh, stuff like that. But that's, that's the way we do it now. And so until you can come back to church, that's what you should be doing. And I want to encourage you to do that. Because right now, it's easy to get away from it. And I'll tell you, it's easy, just like it is from school. It's easy to say, well, I don't have to go to school. I don't have to study. I don't have to go back to school. I don't have to do book reports. I'm not going to read my books. I don't have to go back to school and do math anymore. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I'm just kidding. You will have to do math. But just because you're not in school today doesn't mean you don't need to be studying. Because you will go back to school. And when you get back to school, there's going to be tests and you're not going to be prepared for it. And so just the same, you need to be allowing Jesus to come in, allowing Jesus to minister inside, inside your home. You need to allow him to come into your heart, minister to you personally. You need to allow the Holy Spirit to come and to move and to lead you. You need to allow the worship. There's so many videos of worship on YouTube that you can just turn on and, and, and do. We try to do a little bit here to, to help you guys through this time because you can't come here and worship. And so we're going to post some videos that we've made, some songs that we've done. But you can look up many songs on YouTube and watch and worship the Lord. But you have to take time. You have to be like Mary and say, I'm going to take time. I'm not going to be so busy. And so that's my word for tonight. I want to encourage you guys. I'm going to make more videos and send them out. And uh, we're going to get on Zoom so we can communicate and talk back and forth. But before we go, I want to pray for you guys. And I want you to understand that if there's anybody listening, whether you're part of Long Grove Assembly of God Youth or you're not, maybe you're not even a part of Long, uh, part of Long Grove Assembly of God. Maybe you just picked up on it somehow. But I want you to understand that Jesus loves you. 
And no matter what's happening right now, even though we can't have church here, he still wants to be a part of your life. He still wants you to follow him and to serve him. He still wants to minister to you. He doesn't want you to be so busy that you don't have time for him. And so make time for Jesus. And I can't do an altar call, but I would say this. If you are finding yourself and you're not making time for Jesus, you know who you are. And you know what you need to do. you got to change and you got to start spending time. Find time for Jesus. Find time to read the Bible. Find time to pray. Find time to, to watch these videos and to listen to your pastors and, and, and to others that are on, on, online that you can find and listen to and, and be ministered to, to allow Jesus to come in. All right? Let me pray with you guys and then, and then we'll be done for tonight. Father, we love you. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to minister online through the internet. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for all the students, all those that are listening, Lord, that you would just right now begin to move in their lives. Lord, begin to strengthen them. I pray that Jesus begin to enter into their homes just like he did with Mary and Martha. Lord, I pray that, that we would be receptive like Mary and not so busy with everything going on that we would not have time to spend in Jesus' presence, to spend with the Holy Spirit and allow to move in our lives, allow us to come in into a, a time of war. Worship. I pray that we would be able to set everything aside and focus on you tonight, Lord, and, 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 and each day as, we, as we're in this time. Lord, I pray that you just move, Lord, in the lives of those that are listening. Lord, I pray that each one would, would, would somehow make contact to reach others, to just share the love of Jesus with them over the internet, through telephone, through text, Lord, however it may be, because we can't, we can't come and uh, we can't go talk to them personally, but we can still talk in text, Lord. And I thank you for those, that, that technology that we have have to be able to do this, Lord, and I pray you begin to move right now. We thank you for what you're doing, Lord. We give you glory for what you're doing in the name of Jesus, and we love you tonight. Amen. Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed our worship that we had. I hope you enjoyed the word, and, and I really believe that God wants us to continue to, to seek Jesus and continue to, to, to take time out for Jesus. And so, listen, we're going to be doing some more videos. I'm going to be on here again and uh, doing some more stuff. So uh, be sure and download that Zoom app so that you can be a part of that when we do it. But man, I love you guys. I miss you guys. I can't wait till we can be back in here all together and, and we can worship and have our worship band up here and, and play and, and, and sing and, and just be a part of God's uh, church again. And so our youth group. So, uh, but you guys have, a, have an awesome night and I'll see you in a day or two.